This is the Lattice Training Podcast, where we bring you the best in climbing performance and training from the world's elite athletes, thought leaders, and coaches. Hello, and welcome to the Lattice Training Podcast. Today, we are chatting to Nate Williams. Um, Nate is currently in Vegas trying Return of the Sleepwalker. Uh, This was a boulder problem a v17 put up by daniel woods and he's been projecting this boulder for i suppose a couple years now it was back in 2021 when he did the stand sleepwalker and has now been putting in time and getting really close actually ending the the sit start so we're going to talk a lot about the difficulties of this boulder a little bit about his training for it um and also interestingly um nate's kind of introduction to climbing was quite a cool one it was a very steep learning curve um and had a little bit of a inspiration and mentorship by uh, jimmy webb so yeah it's really cool to get into his past as well um yeah let's get into it um so nate let me just set the scene quickly um you're you're in vegas right now and you're projecting return of the sleepwalker and actually you've got some good weather so um we're currently, I think, also maybe to set the time frame. You're projecting this with Will Bosey, who's putting in some sessions together on on Return of Sleepwalker, um, and so that's kind of what we're talking about today. We're going to dive into this boulder in particular, but I thought it would be good to start at the beginning and just ask, like, how long you've been climbing, how you got into climbing. Yeah. Um, you just want me to. Start. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, uh, let's see. I've been climbing for around ten years, um, and I got into it like in a pretty cliche way. Like I just, I think my one of my friends had a birthday party at the gym, and then I just kind of like <laughs> begged my parents to just like take me back, and then they like eventually did, and then I like loved it even more. And then one summer, like kind of as I was getting into it like one summer I think I climbed just every single day like the whole summer um just like no rest days like the gym was on like my my parents house is on a mountain and like the gym was at the foot so you had to pass the climbing gym to go like basically to go anywhere because there's like like you kind of have to leave the mountain to like you know go to the store or, like do whatever um so we had to pass the gym and like um so like after school you know they'd like take me there and then like yeah, they like it's kind of like a free like daycare center almost. Like they didn't, they could like, <laughs> kind of take me there, and I'd climb for however long, and then they like, pick me up. It was like really easy for to to get me there, I guess. Um, and then I eventually got asked to like join the climbing team there, and it like was a super small team. It was like me and like two other kids. Um, so I started off, I guess, like competing. Just really then, early into your climbing as well. Yeah, this like, is like just a my few years first. In? Yeah, just like a few months. Um, oh wow! Okay, a few months in, right in the deep and end. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like. Yeah, it started. I did well pretty quickly. I have this theory that I started at like the very perf- like, the most perfect age because like my growth plates were all developed, but like, um, I was still like young enough to where I could like you know like my tendons could develop really fast as well. Because yeah, I started when I was like, right about to turn fifteen. Um, okay because yeah. my, my i might have an august birthday and i started like at the beginning of the like the summer and climbed like you know like three or four months and then turned 15 um and then but yeah so started off as like a youth competitor um and i'm like pretty fortunate with my climbing so my coach at the time was dating jimmy webb um and so i kind of <laughs> cool. okay. i kind of grew up i kind of grew up climbing with jimmy webb he was like climber mentor to me and they actually so like they took me to Rocklands that like following summer. Um, and that's when I climbed my first seven C plus. And then like the summer after that is when I climbed my first eight. Wow. And uh, that was Rocklands as well. Yeah. Okay, cool. That's an amazing entry to climbing. I know. Like, firstly, I'm super that you, you kind of get, <laughs> get, get hooked obviously, which I think a lot of people mm-hmm. will relate to. Um, yeah. it definitely took me a little bit longer to like <laughs> want to do it every single day. That's cool. Yeah. And so, uh, Jimmy Webb was a bit of a mentor. Yes. That's obviously maybe more of an outdoor climbing scene. Is that what what drew you into Rockland strips and things? Um I think so. I kind of was um Jimmy, I think back then he was he was competing some as well. 
Um, okay. Like he was doing like you know like the open nationals here in like the U.S., which isn't that cool of an event now, but it used to be like super awesome. Um, and he was mm-hmm. doing like some other competitions well, so I was kind of just like, I think I was just trying to do like kind of whatever he like because he was like competing and climbing, like he was doing them both, and so I was kind of doing them both as well. And like you know, being on the climbing team, like they took us climbing outside, and like I'm from Chattanooga, Tennessee, which is like there's actually like phenomenal climbing there as well so i like you know grew up super close to like phenomenal outdoor climbing like climbing with one of the best climb like boulders in the world like um at like a pretty good gym for you know getting strong quickly like it was kind of like an old school like training dungeon gym like the slabbiest wall i think was like 30 degrees over <laughs> so like didn't really yeah. get much slab training but i feel like um it's like an environment for like getting strong quickly, which I think helped quite a bit. Yeah, I feel like you get a lot of good climbers come out of these gyms, which are not flashy at all. They kind of just yeah. put you in the, and maybe it's a certain mindset you have in those gyms that when you go mm-hmm. there, you're you're there to train almost. Yeah, not, exactly. <laughs> not to have yeah. fun, as it were. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. What, what, do you still compete today? And is that something you've you've stepped away oh. from? It's something I've stepped away from. I think I haven't done a competition in like four years or so the last competition i did was like um it's called the so ill showdown it's like at the Mm -hmm. the climb so ill gym in st louis illinois and that was pretty fun i definitely would like to do another comp soon just to kind of like just for fun to just kind of see just to get like you know smacked and just see kind of how it is but we'll see (laughs) see what the standard is today (laughs) exactly yeah 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 yeah. so would you say your motivations are now more for outdoor climbing or is it about the projects which have pulled you away? Like, is it your time? I think I'm mostly drawn to like stuff that's just like absolutely at my limit and more of like the unknown of what I can do, which I feel like you can't really find in competitions, you know, because you only get like, you know, a few minutes to try and climb something. So you're, it's not like, you know, like obviously like, all of those competitors could do like a way harder climb, you know, if they have like the time to do it. Um, and that's kind of what I like about climbing. And that's why I'm like drawn to projecting, especially like something this hard because like, you know, for a first, like, I don't know, like, I guess my first season trying it, I was like, I probably, I probably can do this climb, but like, I'm not actually like a hundred percent sure that I can do it. And that's what like makes it really like a fun process is cause you're just kind of like, it's like, unknown if you can do it or not which i think that's what i'm mostly drawn to yeah okay it's, it's the projecting then isn't it it's like mm-hmm. putting in an extended period of time in something mm-hmm. yeah for sure like, so that what kind of that brings us on to sleepwalker or mm-hmm. at least the sit which is what you're working on now but mm-hmm. you sent sleepwalker is it last year so when, uh, when did you come across this as a boulder so i sent sleepwalker december of 2020 i think yeah december of 2020 okay um and then so like at that time like the sit really wasn't even a project um it was after i like went back home then uh yeah like a month later after i got home daniel sent me like a picture of like you know the sit holds all chalked up and stuff and he was like yo this thing's like crazy it's like v14 and the sleepwalker it's like gonna be so mega and i was like wow that sounds like way too hard like whole and i just like even then like i had no like real intention of trying it but then like i moved to salt lake like the following season so i was a lot closer to red rocks and i was like ah, like I'll, I'll go try it. i'll see how it is and then like i didn't do super well my first session on it but i was like wow this is like really fun and it's like an excuse to climb on sleepwalker again and i had such an like a good experience doing sleepwalker and then yeah like eventually started like you know being able to do the sit boulder and i was like oh wow like I got to keep trying it. Like I technically can do it cause I can do the stand and the sit boulder. So, um, but then like I had no idea what but, I was getting myself into. So you saw pictures of it when Daniel mm-hmm. was just conceiving of this as a boulder. Does that mean yeah. you were trying it before Daniel had sent it as well? So, okay. I, yeah. So I wasn't like, I had, like I did the stand start and I had to go back home to Tennessee. Um, and then like after I left, that's when like, the sit start became like a project and then like you know like the next few months daniel eventually climbed it and then it was like the season after when i started trying okay. it so what is it about uh sleepwalker that keeps you going back because you've 
been, I, I suppose, trying it for a full two seasons now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, more if you count, you know, the season I did the stand start. But uh, right, they yeah, put, okay. it's it's just extremely enjoyable to climb on. Like it doesn't mess your skin up. Like your body fails before your skin does. So like every time you climb mm-hmm. on it, you feel like you're getting like a pretty good workout. Um, and it's yeah, like yeah. just so physical and like, it's, at least in the beginning, like I feel like for anyone, the progress is going to be like quite linear, which is, you know, always fun to see like that progression. And then like, I feel like it only, at least for me, it only becomes like more of like kind of up and down once you start getting close. Cause then like the conditions matter a lot more and stuff. And it's like very inconsistent conditions, but yeah, I, I just like the, like the micro progress and like feeling stronger on it. That's what kind of like makes it really fun to like go back and, and try more. It's kind of like you just kind of test yourself on it. It sounds like you found something that's properly at your limit then. I remember having yeah. a conversation yeah. with uh, Johnny Kidd, one of the coaches here, and he he basically says, at least this is his perception of it, is that it's not a true project unless you've had backwards progress. So yeah, you had a session totally. where you basically did worse on it. It sounds like you've definitely, you've had, oh. if the beginning oh. is very linear, you're now in yeah. that yeah backwards progress yeah. phase, which is cool. Yeah. So that it sounds like you're you're truly finding your limit on this. What was the process with doing the stand start then? Did that was that a different process? It was super different. I oh, my my tactics were like terrible too. Like I think I did it in ten sessions, but I was trying it two days in a row, one rest day, and like my fifth cycle of that, like second day on trying it is when I did it. Which oh, wow, like, okay makes yeah. no sense and then like after doing it i was like oh wow like i know how to project climbs now like and so like you know i tried to like use that kind of method to do the sit and like it just it just doesn't work like trying something that hard two days in a row and then o- only one rest day and then two days in a row again is just like that's just a recipe for disaster <laughs> so i don't know how that worked yeah with the start, but um but the sandstone progress was all linear. Can you break down how the... Because it's kind of a boulder of two halves now, isn't it? Um, yes. At least if we include the sit into it. Can you yes. break down the, how the two fit together and kind of the difficulty of those two halves for you as well? Sure. So I think... So it's kind of... Or at least it was the top... Like a few weeks ago, it was the talk of the town, you know, like the grade of Sleepwalker. Um this is with Will so sending I, the, the stand. Yeah, I I agree that I think it's more, it's closer to 8C than 8C plus if you're tall enough to reach the crimp from the low undercut, um, which I'm tall enough to do, Will's tall enough to do. Like That's the way Daniel climbed it as well. I think 8C is like very fair. Um, and then the sip boulder, I think is closer to 8B plus for me. Um, Daniel said it was, Daniel thought it was 8B, but I don't know. I just feel like 8B in that style, I do pretty quickly. And I think my first season trying the, like, return and Sleepwalker, like, I had, you know, been able to, like, repeat the stand a few times before I could even climb into the stand. Um, and, like, the moves, mm. the individual moves on the low boulder are quite a bit harder than any moves on Sleepwalker. And then, like, you know, eventually you get to where all the moves are kind of like you know pretty easy to do but then doing like just three in a row is super hard um because they they build like every move is really hard there's no like just free move like so like it's it's on you the entire time and that's what makes it so hard yeah okay yeah um yeah um uh i suppose that brings friction into play a lot as well like there's a lot of moves and you definitely can't chalk up (laughs) yeah yeah um and that's why like you know back well i guess it's not on the podcast but back when we were to what we were talking about earlier is like how that move to the sloper is probably you know like for me it's maybe the one of the easiest moves on the whole boulder in isolation because you can like really control the friction and you can like with perfect friction that moves not very hard but from the sit you are never gonna have perfect friction um and without perfect friction yeah. that move like is so difficult to do you have to you just have to be like a lot stronger than the move um to do it yeah Yeah. so i suppose it's not only that you're going to be really tired but you also have climbed several moves and not not had a chance to chalk up so friction's pretty poor on that then yeah yeah 
Um, but I was I was talking about it um, with my roommate Zach, who's going to Bishop today. There needs to be like a climbing term for it, and like I've I've just been calling it friction control because like it's just like such a it's such like a a variable in hard bouldering. Like like I feel like at this point, like the actual like muscle fatigue and like endurance stuff like that the low boulder should add isn't really affecting me anymore it's just like when i arrive at the red point crux it's just like i'm just not as sticky as i am when it's i'm doing it in isolation and that's what's making it so difficult and like yeah okay, I've just so been calling it is this is this something you can influence have you got any yeah no i like, like it i like it um but you yeah. can't chalk chalk up how are you trying to work this in so it's it's a lot about really finding like the sweet spot for the skin like when you pull on because you know you like you know if your skin's too warm you're just going to be sweaty and I'm like a pretty sweaty climber myself but you know if you get your hands like too cold you're just going to be numb and have no chance so it's like an extremely difficult balance to find and I've been like really I feel like I still haven't quite figured it out and then you know it's like it's like different day to day because you know it's not always going to be the same weather up there so like that's been really difficult for me to figure out I've been using um liquid chalk like just a tiny amount on my finger like so I can like get my hands pretty warm but if I just use a little bit of liquid chalk just on my pads it like dries them up enough right before I pull on I feel like that's been working pretty well but yeah it's just like the the crux undercling and then like the intermediate pinch you grab like the rock is super super glassy so if you're you know if your skin's cold and numb like when you arrive there you just can't like it's just it's it's all you pulling you can't like there's like no stick at all but like and that's what makes like the sit start so so hard but even like on the stand start like the crux undercling it's the second hold you grab so you really have a lot more like friction control like when just doing the stand because like, you know you can like lick your fingers or like use a fan use a heater mm. you know do whatever and you just like arrive there a lot faster um, whereas a sit you know you've done like you know like nine or ten moves before getting there so you kind of lose that ability to control like how the holds are going to feel and that's what makes it that's for me is like the crux of return to sleep walker is just having good friction when you arrive at the slope mm. hopefully that wasn't Have you struggled confusing. with conditions <laughs> like over the yes um, yeah no it's cool yeah yeah so the big problem with sleepwalker especially so like we just had a ton of rain right um the big problem with sleepwalker is the boulders in a wash so if it rains a ton it like will collect you know higher up in the cannon and it just runs right under sleepwalker so it makes like it makes like the whole area feel like super humid you know which for like me as a sweaty climber will seems pretty like sweaty as well so it's been difficult like yesterday was really difficult um and yeah it just makes it like really hard because like when it's super humid you know you have to have your hands be even like colder to be dry and so like like yesterday i was like numbing out every try but i had you know just to get through the bottom boulder i had to have like dry skin so it makes it really difficult like the best conditions for me are when it's warmer and dry and yesterday it was cold and humid, so. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> Not ideal. You're kind of t like talking about building friction or, or friction control, and, and both of you have similar skin conditions in that sense. Yeah. But what's quite cool is you're out there with Will right now working on it. Are you guys sharing a lot of the beta on the movement? And is there anything you've learned from each other? I feel like... Our beta is actually pretty different. He does kind of like a more technical, faster way to climb the bottom. Um, where he, so he like does the first two moves the same, but then he gets this like kind of bad heel toe cam. And then instead of going to the, like the start hold of Sleepwalker as a Gaston, he just goes to it as an undercling and it's like super intense on your wrist and you have to be like super mobile in your wrist for it to work. Um, but it works super well for him and it's like super super scrunchy i've kind of played with it like a little bit but not i haven't really given it a real chance i just kind of feel like i'm a little too big for that beta and like the shoulder way for me um doesn't feel super hard but i'm it's it's not quite as fast as his beta but we pretty much do the stand start the exact same way and i feel like i'm 
pretty helpful to him, but I feel like my beta is, you know, like mostly already figured out. Um, but he just makes like his beta for the bottom look so good that I'm like, it's kind of bugging me that I maybe should have been trying it his way. I don't know. Have you tried it his way? And like, cause you said it is, you have to have quite mobile wrists for it. Yeah. I've, I've played around on it. And I definitely think I could do it. I just have like my way so dialed and like, I mean, I've gotten, like, to the crimp um, with my beta, so, like, it w- it will work. So it's just, like, hmm. I don't know. It just seems like I shouldn't change anything because I was so close. Yeah, I've actually, I was speaking to T, who's out there as well with you at the minute, yeah. and uh, she was saying you're looking really close on it. Where, where are you up to now? What's your high point on the boulder? So I've gotten to, like, the last right-hand crimp, like, past the slipper. Um, and I just wasn't able to past get the in slipper. it. Well, uh, okay. slipper is, it's, yeah, yeah. Oh, like, pass, pass the slipper, or are you asking how is the slipper? Oh, as in you're past the slipper? Yeah. This is kind yeah, of the like, last, the hu- or the red yeah. point crux. hmm Okay. So, yeah. yeah, I just couldn't really get into the crimp well enough to, like, build my feet up and try and match. And I also remember just, I was, I was freaking out, because the problem was, once you stick the sloper and you're on the undercling, it's a very comfortable position, like, it's comfortable enough to where you can like think and so i was like oh my gosh i could maybe do it and so like i kind of just freaked out i kind of knew that was going to happen the first time picking this up yeah is it fair to say is it fair to say that there's um there's like every move after the sloper is then also the next red point cracks (laughs) probably so it really just isn't over until you like have the jug so yeah you definitely could fall kind of anywhere have you um have you yeah have you done any training specifically for return to seatwalk because i know you're working with billy at the minute as well yeah there's we're doing lots of um power endurance training and then i was doing lots of um like weighted one arm hangs to kind of like build like the the shoulder and the lat because i feel like it's a hot take but i feel like sleepwalker is really not that bicepy it's more like in your shoulder and lats because i kind of like take the undercling with like my arm in like a one uh 120 degree position instead of like a 90 and maybe that's because i just have weak biceps and i choose to put it in my shoulder um but yeah that was really helpful and then like i had just like a circuit project on the tension board that i kind of would just try and then i was doing lots of like um like i would try and do like a v11 or 12 three times in a row on the kilter board at like steep um and that seemed to be super helpful as well so just kind of like you know not crazy specific to it but like i wasn't like training on like a replica or anything but like kind of like hitting the same systems used yeah okay yeah so it's all about the power endurance for this boulder now because how many how many moves is it in total for me it's 14 moves but like all hard yeah yeah and absolutely unrelenting yeah yeah yeah. uh so on the form of training can you give us like what's what's your favorite training exercise or like one Um, thing you think everyone should be trying i'm a huge fan of one arm hangs because it like you know it's not only beneficial for your fingers but i really think it helps like with the shoulder stability strength and like your lats because, like, I feel like, you know, I've been training one-arm hangs for so long, I feel like I can just get a hold and, like, pull up, and then I can, like, keep all this still. And, like, it makes my body not move when I, like, you know, reach for, like, the next hold. Um, and, like, I know it's doing one-arm hangs on, like, an edge is, like, a pretty advanced, um, like, training thing, but, like, I think you'd kind of get the same effect on the shoulder and lat if you were just, like, hanging on a jug. And I think that's something, like people should do more like i'm not a huge fan of like the the like the block pull-ups because i feel like they neglect like the shoulder and i feel like you like use your shoulder so much in climbing and like it's you know it's like really important to have healthy shoulders in climbing because like you know like i feel like a lot of people have shoulder problems i guess but yeah i feel like that's been like the most helpful yeah, thing that's in, fair. In climbing. <laughs> okay yeah. yeah so you think there's there's what value in progressing from just like a, a jug to a large edge, just like working on those one arm hangs, that kind of coordination yeah, yeah. between the the fingers and the shoulder. Exactly. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Right, there you go. Hot take. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I wanted to ask about motivations outside of of Sleepwalker. Uh, is yeah. there anything else you've got your eyes set on? Or are you absolutely all in on this one? I mean, right now I'm 
I'm all in on this one until I, I'm all in on this one until I can do it. And like, you know, after falling after the sloper, I'm like certain I can do it. Um, I don't know when. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm hoping I do it this season. We'll see. I feel like I'd have to really mess up to not do it this season, but it is possible. Um, but after I do it, there is this boulder in Little Cottonwood Canyon, which is, you know, right up like next to Salt Lake City called Grand Illusion that I'll try in the spring. And then hopefully next climbing season, I can do a Switzerland trip and I'd go to try Alphine. But yeah. yeah so okay. just kind of I guess like, Will's been getting psyched on it. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. It looks, it just looks, it just looks like really fun to climb on i think that's like like that's why i like trying return the sleepwalker so much it's just like you know i just love it's just so enjoyable to just go like have a session up there it's like so much fun um and that i feel like alpha seems like a kind of similar experience um so it seems like a really good time to just climb on it yeah i think the the take on i suppose both these projects are that like although i think you're having trouble with conditions makes a lot of sense for sloper but like Mm -hmm you're still in the desert and it yeah apart from maybe the last couple of weeks like it doesn't rain that much conditions yeah. are quite stable all yeah. the holds are quite skin friendly like mm-hmm. you can have it you can have a good session on it can't you without yeah, yeah tearing for sure. through a tip or something after like yeah. two moves <laughs> yeah 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 like you really can yeah, just yeah. climb all day on it which is what i like to do and it seems like you can do that on alphane as well and like you can definitely do that on grand illusion too and i think that's what i like so much about like those types of boulders i just like i don't know i feel like i kind of just it just makes it feel like like you're getting a good like workout and you don't have to be like quite so tactical you can just kind of like throw yourself at it which i like like that's what i enjoy doing i like to just like throw myself at a boulder yeah 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 what's your plan now for the rest of the season i'm kind of just um i'm probably gonna stay here for like another week and then i think you know because like I'm camping this time around, so it's, like, a little harder to stay in Las Vegas as long. Um, So I'm thinking, you know, depending how it it goes, if I feel, like, nail-bitingly close, I'll just just stick it out. But I'm planning on having, like, three or four more sessions on it, then heading back to Salt Lake for a few days. And then when I come come back out after that, I'll be able to stay with um, my friend that lives here again. And then I'll probably just, you know, do pretty long trip again and hopefully no more rain it looks good for the foreseeable, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> foreseeable future though so that rain was a real bummer what's what's the climbing season in in vegas in red rocks um so i think it's like is there a good time yeah it's kind of like in black velvet canyon which is where sleepwalker is like it's just like the it gets no sun so it stays super cold so like it's super long climbing season specific to that canyon though like you can climb on it in it from like late october to early april you know like it's arguably it's arguably too cold in january but you know this january at least at the beginning it was like fine um but so like the other areas here like um like craft is a really popular zone it's like gets a ton of sun it's not as high elevation so that place is more of like only winter crag um but yeah, Sleepwalker mm. specifically, you can climb on for quite a long time, which is awesome. Yeah. Oh man, I'm so jealous. I, They're jealous of good conditions. Yeah. Cool. All right. I think um, maybe there's a, a good place to wrap up for now. I know it's been quite a short chat, um, but I think maybe we'll we'll catch up at some point when um yeah yeah, yeah I, we'll I know talk about the yeah, yeah no it's okay yeah got to go home wife's got baby at home and I yeah. said I'll be home for a second. <laughs> yeah. No problem. <laughs> cool but thank you so much for coming on again nate um yeah. i know we've had our, our difficulties but yeah, it's been really good to get you back on i was gonna say it might be cool i don't know how it would work but we could do like a freeway podcast um while he's still out there we could all kind of like yeah. chat chat through through climbing and things and that might be quite oh cool. yeah I, that sounds like a ton of fun I'd, I'd love to do that yeah okay maybe i'll, I'll reach out to will see if he wants to just yeah. have a catch up one evening we can chat yeah. bouldering chat projects yeah, then- Oh, that sounds like a cool, fun. nice one. Um, thank you again sure. for coming on, and I'll um I'll be in touch. Yeah, no problem. All right, have a good one.